Alfred Hershey and Martha Chase, they provided a second evidence that DNA is the genetic material and it was the final evidence which proved that DNA and not the protein is the genetic material. They were working on T2. T2 is a bacteriophage which infects the bacterium E. coli. Here you can see uh, this is the structure of a bacteriophage, T2 bacteriophage. It contains only two types of biomolecules and these are DNA core and a protein coat. So only DNA and protein is present. So either DNA is the genetic material or protein is the genetic material of this bacteriophage. Here you can see the life cycle of a bacteriophage. In this life cycle, a bacteriophage infects bacteria. Here it attaches to the bacterial cell wall and inserts its DNA into the cell. Inside the cell, this DNA replicates and make new copies. After replication of DNA, new phage particles are synthesized inside the cell and then these particles are assembled into mature phage particles and finally these mature phage particles are emerged out after bursting the cell. In the whole life cycle, you can see this bacteriophage, it remains outside the bacterial cell. It never goes inside the cell and only DNA goes inside the cell. So in their experiment, they used radioisotopes of phosphorus and sulfur because DNA contains phosphorus but not sulfur. So Hershey and Chase used P32 to follow or to trace phage DNA during reproduction, during its life cycle. Similarly, proteins contain sulfur but not phosphorus. So Hershey and Chase used S35 to trace the protein during life cycle of bacteriophage. They first uh, grew E. coli in a medium containing P32 and infected the bacteria with T2 so that all the new phages would have DNA labeled with P32. Uh, so in their culture, first they cultured uh, E. coli in uh, P32. That means all the E. coli, the, all the uh, DNA of E. coli should be labeled with P32. And there should be no any DNA present in the bacterial cell, which is without P32. And then they infected these bacteria with bacteriophage. So eventually the P32 which was present inside the bacterial cell that is uh, used to make the uh, uh, new uh, phage particles. They uh, grew a second batch of E. coli in a medium containing S35 that uh, uh, with the uh, main objective that all the proteins present in E. coli they should be labeled with S35 and there should be no any protein which is without S35. After culturing the E. coli in this medium, they infected these S35 labeled bacteria with T2 so that all these new phages would have protein labeled with S32, sorry, S35. Hershey and Chase then infected separate batch, batches of unlabeled E. coli. So actually in their third experiment, they cultured E. coli in the medium which contained normal phosphorus and normal sulfur. But they infected these bacteria with S35 and P32 labeled phages, which was actually progeny of first experiment. Then they placed E. coli cells in a blender so that the empty protein coat 
which is present on the surface of the bacterial cell that may be sheared off uh, during uh, blending. They separated out the protein coats and cultured the infected bacterial cells. These bacterial cells before blending were already infected. That means the phage has injected their DNA into the cell and the coat was outside the cell. So they removed, they simply removed the coat, but the DNA was actually transferred inside the E. coli cells. So they further cultured these uh, cells and eventually the cells burst and new phage particles emerged. When phage labeled with S35 infected the bacteria, most of the radioactivity separated with the protein coat because the phages which were labeled with S35 they contained all the S35 protein in their coat. When new phages emerged from the cell they contained almost no rad radioactivity because the DNA of these S35 labeled phage that contain no p32 that contain normal phosphorus so it is obvious that protein is not the genetic material if it had been the genetic material the radioactivity must be present in the new progeny of phage when phages labeled with p32 infected the bacteria and the protein coat was removed, radioactivity was still present in the cells. That means the P32 was present in the DNA and DNA had been injected into the cells of bacteria. So after removal of phage coat, the radioactivity was still present in the cell. When new phages emerged from the cell, they were also radioactive because these new phages were synthesized from the P32 labeled DNA which was present inside the bacterial cell. So it is clear that DNA is the genetic material and not the protein. Let us see the flow diagram of uh, the experiments. In the experiments they uh, cultured bacteria in S35 medium and uh, this S35 uh, was transferred to the phages and when the bacteria, uh, normal bacteria were infected with these phages, these phages injected their DNA into the cells. As you know this DNA is not labeled, it contain normally normal phosphorus. So after this infection they uh, put this culture in the blender to shear off the protein coats. When these protein coats were sheared off, they centrifuged the culture. All the protein coats were present in the supernatant while all the cells, cells were present in the pellet. So they cultured this pellet and they found cells. When these cells burst, they produced new phages which were not radioactive. So all the radioactivity went in the protein coat. In the second batch, they cultured E. coli in P32 so that all the bacteria are P32 labeled and then they infected the phages to these uh, bacteria and the phages also uh, became labeled with P32. During then next they infected the normal E. coli cells with these phages. These phages injected their DNA in the normal E. coli cells. Then they blended the culture and after blending the protein coats were sheared off and they saw no radioactivity 
in the protein coats while the radioactivity was present inside the cells and when new progeny phages were emerged from these cells the new progeny also contained radioactivity so by this experiment they proved that dna is the genetic material 